it's easy for me to say happy Mother's Day, uh, but I mean, obviously that's not directed at most of you. Uh, I believe the the split on the readers and listeners of this site is probably 95 to 5 in favor of the male demographic, though I hope I'm wrong. But a happy Metal Mother's Day to all of the head-banging, devil-horn-throwing-up women uh, who follow Sorrow Eternal and metal in general. Uh, I wanted to hit up on a couple reviews this week. Uh, one in particular, uh, which has garnered us some, some serious attention. But let's start with the beginning of the week with the new album by The Ocean. Uh, the name of the album is Pelagial, which I've never really been a huge fan of The Ocean. I've always I've heard their music, I've, I've listened to it, I've had friends tell me to listen to it, and I, I've just never really fully understood what made them so good. Uh, and it took, it took a little while. But I think this album has kind of cemented them as uh, a force to be reckoned with. I, I like the the journey that the band takes you on because you can feel the story in each of the songs. You can feel the change of mood. You can feel the change of depth, as it were, as you travel you know, into the deeper parts of the ocean. And I, I like that they do that. I like that they really put so much thought and effort into each track. There's really something to be said about that. So I really suggest that you take it out, and I really used the word really a lot right there, didn't I? Well, fuck, you know, I, I'm really sorry that I did that. But that was a good start to the week, and then the week took a, a, a bizarre a bizarre turn. Uh, first we have the, the new EP, Testimony, by the band Drunar, and Viking metal is obviously kind of the, the choice of metal for... Uh, a lot of people who don't like metal. So when you have this band, Drunar, uh, they're from Belgium, and there's a lot, there's a lot going on on the album, but unfortunately you can't really hear it. Uh, I don't know if it was the recording, if it was the mixing, the mastering, I don't know, but it is so muffled and so just condensed into this ball of of just that you you just can't you can't pick out all of the tiny little intricacies. So for all I know, you know, there's a great EP buried underneath all that, but if you can't make it out, it just doesn't make sense. And, you know, I, I had said in the review that this would become the how-to, or how-not-to, for audio school graduates, and I, I think that that's really the case. I think that you could easily point to this as one of the EPs where the recording, mixing, and mastering really cost this band a really good out, uh, output, because I think there's probably something really good underneath it all. Though I'm not really sure. Uh, you can check that one out, though. Uh, then, the middle of the week, this was the big one for the week, the new album by Darkmoor. Uh, passed this along to Brian, who as it turns out is a huge fan, and when he listened to it and he was working on his review, he had told me it's different. It's not the same that, you know, that they've done before, it's different. I, I was a little worried, I'll be honest, I was slightly worried. The uh, name of the album is Ars Musica, and apparently it's different but awesome. And uh, he actually considers this one to be a tie for their best album. Now, when the band has been around as long as they have, it, that says a lot for them to be getting better with each album. So, I was a big fan of the album Autumnal. Uh, it's really, really fucking good, but this one blows that out of the water. And I think, I think Brian hit the nail on the head when he said that this one has more heart. There's, there's so much emotion just ingrained into everything on the album. You really should check it out. It doesn't come out until June, June 18th, on Scarlet Records. So definitely keep an eye out for that. Uh, you know, Check out any of the stuff they've, re they've released. I believe they put out a single or two. Definitely give it a listen, because you are going to be blown away with what they're doing here. Um, then, unfortunately, the end of the week was not nearly as good. Uh, those of you who have listened to metal for any amount of time know who Jason Newstead is. Now, Jason Newstead, for those of you who don't know, uh, was the one-time bass player for Metallica. Uh, and his leaving of the band was somewhat unceremonious. He just kind of quit. And it was, well, you know, the touring has you know taken its toll, his neck injury, blah, blah, blah. But what made it really weird is that he left and then immediately resurfaced uh, in his uh, Echo Brain project. He then went on to do uh, the Rockstar Supernova reality show where they formed the horrible, horrible, horrible band Rockstar Supernova, uh, which was absolutely god-awful, and then he, he joined Voivod, which I thought was cool, uh, and 
I guess he still does work with them. But anyway, not to ramble on about this. He, he has a band of his own. It's just called Newstead. And I think the best way that I can really summarize, you know, my review and the album at large is, or the EP, it's called Metal, is that it's just trying to be, trying to be a revival of something that just doesn't exist anymore. You know, he's not in the height of his thrash god status here, and I, some of it, it just sounds like down tempo chugging, and the last track on the album sounds like, I mean, it could be a Megadeth rip off, through and through. And not that that's a horrible thing, but you know, with with Newstead on vocals, he sang, he kind of channels the Dave Mustaine sound. The EP's all I can say is it's kind of boring. There's not really much going on. That was a little bit of a disappointment. There is a full length album coming in the near future, though. Uh, the week ended kind of with uh, the band Trinacreus, an Italian uh, progressive power metal band, and uh, you know, much like uh, Drunar. There's, there's a lot of good with Trinacreus. Unfortunately, for them, it's not a matter of production that kills it. It's the length of the songs. I don't know why it is that every band thinks that their songs have to be eight, nine, ten minutes long. That's great. If you can write a song that's coherent and cohesive for eight minutes, more power to you. You know, there are bands that do that well. Bands like Opeth, bands like Dream Theater, even, you know, some of the other more ridiculous bands, uh, Isan, uh, Enslaved, they can write songs that long, but you don't have to do that. And unfortunately for this band, you know, that, that's exactly what happened. They, they just, they got overzealous. That's the best thing I can say. And, you know, when you're at the height of your career, when you're hitting on, on all cylinders, sometimes, you know, you just want to go, oh, I got so much more to say. Make another track, split it up at least, so you can kind of get through some of the, the, um, uh, the uh, dead weight in the track and you know part of the problem also is their vocalist doesn't really match the intensity of the band and I think that that does them a disservice I mean there's a, like I said there's a lot of good things going on on the album but there's also there's a lot of work to be done unfortunately um, but that you know that was the review for the week and you know it was a mixed bag which you know typically it is you know, we always find some good and some bad but, you know, it's worth mentioning that, obviously, we do end up leaning more towards the good reviews just because we want to spread good music to you. I don't want to talk you out of anything. I don't want to, you know, convince you not to listen to something. I really would rather just convince you to check something out that you might not have done. Um, so, obviously, again, as I've said in podcasts before, you know, you're going to see a lot of good reviews because we want to listen to good music, too. Uh, especially, I know Brian you know, is still relatively new to the site, and he's... You know, he's had some really good reviews, only one or two bad ones, and I think that, you know, that says a lot about what we want. You know, we're not doing this to, you know, hurt anybody, we're not, you know, trying to downgrade any bands, we're just listening to music as metal fans and trying to give you guys a, a good synopsis of what's going on. Uh, and I encourage you also to listen to the podcast that went up yesterday, uh, my take on Spotify, and... You know, let me know if you have any feedback on that because I think there's a, a pretty large open discussion to be had about Spotify and, and how it affects everyone uh, that's a part of it. So definitely give that a listen. If you're listening to this, I encourage you to go back and uh, you know check out the reviews. we got another big week coming. New album from Infinita Symphonia, who was one of our favorites uh, when the site started. Uh, Polyphia, Churchburn, uh, Abon from France. I'm not actually sure what Brian's working on for this week. I think he, he had something in mind. Um, but, you know, a lot of stuff coming. Already, you know, mostly through the next week as well. And hopefully an interview coming also with Darkmore. I know that's in the works. So until then, guys, just keep listening. Keep checking out the site. Thank you so much for helping us pass the 100,000 view mark. And uh, I just want to dedicate this podcast in whatever form. Uh, the passing of Slayer guitarist Jeff Hanneman. I mean, I know, you know, people pass and musicians passing on don't, you know, might not affect most of us personally, but obviously Slayer has been a huge influence on what we do here and what a lot of the bands that we like are doing in their career. And Jeff Hanneman was a big part of that. So, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, it, I don't want to say prayers, but you know, thoughts go out to his family and friends and the guys in the band who were close with him. And, uh, Yep, so guys, keep listening. We'll catch you guys next week.